great. Any questions about this script in general? Uh, uh, no, we'll wing it if necessary. Okay, thanks. Thanks for filling in today. You're welcome. Um, and I guess it, it does look like we have quorum. So as soon as we're streaming on YouTube, um, we should be ready to go. All clear on YouTube. It is streaming, Rick. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. So um, Jason, we'll hand it over to you. Okay, good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm calling this meeting to order at 9.34 a.m. My name is Jason Whooper. I am a commissioner for the Commission for Arts and Culture and vice chair of the Public Art Committee, filling in today for Commissioner Ben Meza, who could not attend with us this morning. We are going to do a quick roll call to confirm committee member attendance. When I call your name, please unmute yourself and say present. Linda Caballero Sotelo? Present. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Anthony Graham? Present. Melinda Guillen? Present. Larry Herzog? Presente. Sorry. Present. On June Park? On June Park? No? Okay. Um, she, she won't be attending today. Great. Thank you for that, Chuck. Commissioner Doreen Chandran? Tiffany Y. Ying Perez? Uh, present. Thank you. Okay, so everyone, thank you for your attendance, which has been noted. Also joining us today is Commission for Arts and Culture staff, including Chief of Civic Art Strategies, Christine Jones, Senior Public Art Manager, Chuck Miller, and Civic Art Project Manager, Dr. Lara Bullock, as well as representatives from the City Attorney's Office. Before we get into today's agenda, I'm going to call on Chuck Miller to run down some of the guidelines for today's meeting. Chuck? Sorry, just had to unmute. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Wooper. Woo, excuse me, Commissioner Wooper, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so, as you've noted, the city is moving over to Zoom to host these virtual public meetings. Um, I presume that most of you might be more familiar with this platform, uh, but please note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of the Zoom window. The camera icon is to activate your video. The microphone is to mute and unmute. Please remember to stay muted when you are not talking and to unmute yourself when you speak. You will also see the chat window button. Please keep your chat window open at all times as you will be using the chat to signal when you'd like to speak. We do recognize that there is a hand raising function. However, we request that you type speak in the chat window uh, for the sake of viewers on YouTube and so that we can acknowledge re uh, requests in order. Uh, when wa wanting to make a motion, second to motion, or participate in a discussion, please type speak in the chat box. Um, and uh, Commissioner Wooper will call on you in the order entered. Please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling that you'd like to speak in order to comply with the Brown Act. Uh, thank you, and I'll hand it back to you, Commissioner Wooper. I think you're on mute, Jason. That helps, okay, thank you, I appreciate that. We're gonna move on to item number two on the agenda. Do we have any non-agenda public comment? I don't believe no. so. We no. do not, thank you. Okay, let's move on to Number three, the chair's report. Okay. Commission business. 
So I'd like to report that the Public Art Committee's recommendation of the purchase of the 105 artworks from San Diego County-based artists through our SD Practice initiative to be included in the Civic Art Collection was recommended by the commission at our October meeting last week. And once again, thank you for your flexibility and patience as we continue with remote meetings. Um, we have an action item now. We need to approve the October 2nd, 2020 public art committee meeting minutes. Um, is there any public comment to be read regarding this agenda item? There is none. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone has had the opportunity to review the minutes from the October 2nd, 2020 meeting. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes as they are? If you would, please type speak on the chat window. And when I call on you, verbally state your name and make your motion. Anyone? Okay. Anthony Graham. Hi, this is Anthony Graham and I move to uh, approve the minutes of the October 2nd, 2020 meeting. Thank you, Anthony. Would anyone like to second that? Please type speak on the chat window and verbally state your name and second. Larry Herzog. Right, this is Larry Herzog, I second the motion. Thank you, Larry. We now have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If you would like to speak, please type speak on the chat window. Okay, hearing none, now we will take a vote. I will call your name and you will respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Remember that you do not need to have been present at the October meeting to vote or discuss. Linda Caballero Sotelo? Yay. Anthony Graham? Yay. Melinda Guillen? Yay. Larry Herzog? Yay. Un Jung Park? Commissioner Juan is not present at the meeting. Sorry, Jay. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Doreen Chandran? Tiffany Y. Ying Beres? Yay. And my vote is also a yay. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to agenda item number four. It's the artwork acquisition proposal. It's a donation of artwork by Kim Emerson, which looks really exciting to me. Um, is there any public comment to be read regarding this agenda item? Um, yes, there is, Jason. I will uh, read the public comment. Uh, if, bear with me for one second. Um, the, the comment is from uh, Kim Emerson, uh, the artist who has uh, proposed the donation. And she states, uh, Dear Public Art Committee, thank you for this opportunity to allow me to share a brief statement about the, mur the mosaic mural entitled Kaleidoscope of Butterflies at the Adams Recreation Center in Normal Heights. The inspiration for this project was launched during a community generated charrette that took place on October 9th, 2018 when approximately 40 citizens who live in Normal Heights gathered together at the Normal Heights Community Center Meeting Hall to discuss the problems and positive ways to move forward with ideas to improve the Adams Community Park. Three years ago, the park had been invaded by people who were camping there 24 seven, increasing crime, using drugs and destroying this little pocket park, which happens to be located in the heart of Normal Heights. 
Since then, the Parks and Recreation Department has re-landscaped the park and further, the idea for a mural on the west facing wall was generated by the staff at the Adams Recreation Center. I am not acting alone in offering this artwork as a donation. In fact, this project is and will be a gift from the citizens of Normal Heights to the community of Normal Heights in the city of San Diego for the last two years before applying <laughs> for this project with the city, I have painstakingly presented the idea and designs to all of the community groups who have had nothing but praise and positive feedback. We hope and plan to use the power of art to make a statement about how wonderful our community of San Diego truly is. Thank you. Sincerely, Kim Emerson. And that concludes the public comment for this agenda item. Oops, you're on mute, Jason. I keep doing that. I don't, it must be a Friday morning thing. So next, I would like to call on Dr. Laura Bullock to provide an overview of the proposal and the staff recommendation. Laura? Thanks, Commissioner Wooper. So um, we'll start with this first slide. So in August 2020, city staff received a donation application from Kim Emerson and she's proposing a gift to the city of San Diego that includes a mosaic artwork. So it will be sited on the northwest corner of the Adams Recreation Center building at 3491 Adams Avenue. And staff has evaluated the application utilizing artwork accession criteria and site selection criteria contained in the city of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture Department Instruction Collection Management Policy for the Civic Art Collection. So before we look at some images of the proposed donation, I just wanted to show you a map um, kind of showing you where the artwork will be located. So this red um, icon is where the rec center is located. You can see it's near the 15 and Kensington and Felton Heights neighborhoods. Normal Heights is um, the community group. So here is another image. So here the recreation center is along Adams Avenue. And then behind the recreation center, you see some park space. So, um, as we heard in Kim's statement that Chuck just read, um, the community is really excited about the proposed donation. Um, they, she has support from Urban Arts as well as the Adams Recreation Advisory Group and staff at the Adams Recreation Center. And as she mentioned, the public's participated in an artist-driven charrette. And in addition, she has participated in community planning groups. Um, and one of the um, efforts in this area is to develop Kaleidoscope Park, which is would be located right next to the rec center and would also have a butterfly theme, which is relevant um, in relation to Kim's proposed artwork, which also um, would have a butterfly theme. So this is a diagram of the entire mosaic piece. And then here are some images where you can see a mock-up of the proposed artwork on the wall of the Adams Rec Center. So this um, particular wall at the Rec Center has a history of um, you can see kind of some graffiti has been painted over. So the community feels that by putting a cheerful, colorful um, mosaic in this place, it would mitigate um, graffiti. And also um, I know the Parks and Rec Department has put forth a great effort and sort of redone um, the nearby park that I was mentioning before. And so there's this whole kind of revitalization effort um, going on in this specific um, point. So this artwork would kind of help with that effort. So here is how it wraps along the wall. So this is the other component of it. And so um, the action item is to recommend to the city of San Diego commission 
for arts and culture that the executive director of the commission accept the proposed donation of an artwork for inclusion into the civic art collection upon the fulfillment of six conditions. And those six conditions are um, all other city departments that are stakeholders indicate support for the installation and exhibition of the artwork. The artist and donor, Kim Emerson, agree to donate the artwork as an unrestricted gift to the city. Three, Kim Emerson agrees to modify design, fabrication, transportation, and installation plans if requested by the city to address any safety, liability, environmental, and accessibility issues, um, as well as supplying the city with a maintenance instruction manual. Um, number five, the artist copyright holder agrees to grant the city non-exclusive, irrevocable, and royalty-free license to reproduce the artwork. And then six, the artist agrees to the city's standard Visual Arts Rights Act, VERA, and California Art Preservation Act, CAPA waivers. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bullock. You're welcome. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to recommend to the Commission for Arts and Culture that the executive director of the commission accept the proposed donation of an artwork for inclusion into the civic art collection upon the fulfillment of six accession conditions that you just heard. Uh, if you would, please type speak on the chat window. And when I call on you, verbally state your name and make your motion. Commissioner Puche? Uh, I can't make the motion. Okay, um, I see your speak there though. Yeah, and I had a question for Dr. Bullock. Um, I was wondering if the background of the building, you know, the background of the artwork, um, the building's kind of an ugly color. And I just was wondering if they were going to, you know, make that a solid color that would set that off a little bit better. I, I, you know, I like the artwork, but the building color is really ugly. And I, I wonder if they're doing anything with that. Thank you. Um, that actually has come up as a topic for discussion. So um, if the donation proposal is accepted, um, we'll continue that conversation. But um, thank you for that. Um, it, I, it has been brought up. Okay, hearing no proposed motions, I will just make the motion myself. So I move to make the recommendation as proposed and heard moments ago. Do I have a second? Larry Herzog? I second the motion. Thank you, Larry. Um, okay, now let's uh, have a little discussion on the action item. Um, I'd like to comment that I am really impressed by this proposed donation. I looked at some of um, Emerson's other work and I really love the mosaics. I love the vibrant colors and how they pop. And I actually have a personal connection to the Adams Avenue Rec Center because I used to play um, kickball at that park right there. And, you know, for lack of a better word, it, you know, looked kind of like a dump over there. It was kind of run down. So I really think this artwork will really, really um, help add a new element of vibrancy and color and art that the park in the area really, really needs. So I'm really excited about this uh, project moving forward. Does anyone else have any comments, questions, discussion points? Okay, Larry Herzog. Yeah, I just wanna, I also support the, the project and I wanted to mention that in uh, one of my urban design seminars in the city planning department, I had a team of students study that park as part of a public space design project. And what they found was pretty much what you just said, Jason, that uh, 
they interviewed people and they observed and, and uh, sketched the design elements of the park. And that one of the things that people said about it was that it felt depressing. Uh, sometimes they didn't feel welcome there and it definitely needed uh, some color and more of a, um, some other design changes to make it more appealing to the community. So I think this is a great step in that direction. I like the color in the mural and I think it will add uh, uh, another step forward for, for the park. So just wanted to mention that we did this ethnographic study and it very much supports this, this kind of project. So that's it. Right, right. And I, and I wanna to add to my comments as well. Um, one of the things I really like about it is that it's a mosaic. I don't think the images we just saw do it justice because in the, the mock-up image, it looks almost like a flat painting type mural. But my understanding based on mosaic is that there's going to be little tiles everywhere and you're going to have a nice texture and maybe that'll make it look a lot better, notwithstanding the um, unimpressive brown backdrop of the rest of the building. <clears throat> and I would like to also add that the artist has a piece in the city's collection and she has, um, you know, created artworks all over California. So she has a, a, you know, a reputation as an artist. Thank you, Dr. Bullock. Any more comments, discussion points? No? Wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. wait. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm typing speak now. <laughs> Commissioner Poutre. Thank you. Um, I uh, am just curious. Um, she's donating this, so obviously it's not going to cost us any money uh, other than after, you know, for maintenance and such. Um, is someone else paying her for this? Do we know? I, does it matter? I don't know, but. Thanks, Commissioner Putre. I have an answer for you. So she has she has a lot of community members on board and different groups. So she is going to self fundraise for this, and she has she's proposed a um, tentative fundraising schedule. So it'll take her approximately a year to raise the funds, but she has a lot of support. So it sounds like she's just you know once if the donation goes through, then she's gonna get on the ground and start raising those funds. That's great. Thanks, Dr. Bullock. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Putre. Is that it for the comments? Okay. We're going to move on to a vote. When I call your name, you will respond out loud with a yay, nay, or abstain. Linda Caballero Sotelo? Yay. Anthony Graham? Yay. Melinda Guillen? Yay. Larry Herzog? Yay. Unjung Park? Commissioner Chambron? Tiffany Y. Ying Beres? Yay. My vote is a yay. Thank you, everyone. The motion passes. <clears throat> we're going to move on to action. Sorry, we're going to move on to item number five on the agenda. It's a presentation about the preliminary artwork idea for Fairmont Avenue Fire Station by Suzanne Logorecci. Um, is there any public comment to be read regarding this agenda item, Chuck? Uh, there is none. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. I'd like to call on Dr. Lara Bullock to provide an overview of the project and introduce Susan to provide a presentation on the preliminary idea. Thank you. So, okay, so guys, I'm just gonna remind you of the artwork development process. So um, the city procures an artist, the artist gathers research and engages the public, and then the artist creates a preliminary idea. So this is the step that we're on today. And then after which um, a schematic proposal, public input, a final proposal, and then the artist can start fabricating and developing their artwork. So a reminder of the public art committee's role in the artwork development process. So. Today we're in the blue square. So we're, you're 
job is to provide feedback to the artist um, on her preliminary idea. Okay, so the proposed artwork will be for the new fire station on Fairmount Avenue and 47th Street. So this is just a bird's eye view of the site. And then zooming out, you can really kind of get the context in terms of the neighborhoods in which it's situated. So um, it's in City Heights and the Ridgeview Webster area. And it's right along um, Choyas Creek, which goes behind um, the fire station. And Choyas Creek is, um, it's, a, it's a natural feature next to the fire station, but it's also really celebrated by the local community. And um, the city actually received an NEA grant to develop and um, kind of beautify the creek. And so Susan is here today to tell you about her process and her project and then collect feedback from you guys. So Susan, are you here? Hi. <laughs> Hi. So you can take it away from here. Just tell me next slide and I'll progress through. Sounds good. Thanks. I'm really excited to be here today to share my ideas with y'all and I'm interested in hearing what you think as well. Um, so for my uh, preliminary design idea, there are three portions to it. There's the Fairmount Avenue um, side. There's an artwork on that side of the building. There's an artwork on the 47th Street side, and then there's an artwork on the entryway. So they're all separate pieces, but they're interconnected. <clears throat> so um, back in mid-April, I met personnel and the design team and Chief Gabaret described the community as diverse and the terrain around the station as hilly. And he also said that successful projects um, address fire rescue and the community as well. Uh, we also looked for art opportunities as a team. We leaned towards the public sites, the exterior of the building, not the interior, um, just the most visible portions. And so I walked away with that meeting thinking about uh, three goals. I wanted to depict the fire service, depict the community, and then also integrate the art into the architecture. Uh, next image. Uh, so this is the first piece. Um, after the first meeting, I came up with the design for the Fairmount Avenue side. I researched the neighborhoods, particularly in the Ridgeview area, because that seemed closest to the station. Um, and I settled on kind of single family homes that are popular in the area um, with lawns and gray or tile roofs on long streets with sidewalks, just pretty walkable neighborhoods. Uh, next image. You can see a little more closely. And so for this piece, the streets uh, would frame each house. It will, they'll link together to form the shape of a ladder. Um, this piece will be made up of a series of rectangles and the negative space of the building creates the ladder design. Um, the artwork on the side of the building obviously runs vertically up on the right-hand side uh, next to these windows. Uh, it'll be colorful, but not bright. Uh, and it'll be visible to cars and other passerbys from the street. Um, the concept behind this piece is simple. The ladder symbolizing the fire service, the houses symbolize the community are intertwined and they rely on each other for support. Uh, so next image. This is the piece um, without the building, obviously. Um, I wanted the artwork to be really welcoming and I wanted it to also be elegant and beautiful. Um, the art foot, artwork footprint for this side would be approximately 25 feet tall total and four and a half uh, feet wide. Uh, next image. So this is the 47th street side of the building. Um, in early October, we had a community meeting, about 15 to 20 people, very passionate and informed citizens um, showed up to describe their community. They also um, described the architecture of mostly single family homes. Um, we talked a lot about the community. Um, they talked about how um, the most important values are caring for their neighbors and protecting and enjoying that natural space by the Choyas Creek. Um, they've described a long history of the community partnering up with the city and volunteering with community organizers to beautify and um, clean that, keep that space clean and maintained. Um, so for the second piece, I really wanted to depict that area. Uh, next image, you can see it a little more closely. So this would be a horizontal piece of Choyas Creek. It's an aerial view of the trailhead area. 
And these are actually paintings that I've made that you're looking at actually, um, that will be fabricated into a material that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the palette for this piece would be greens and kind of yellows and pinky beiges. It would also be visible from the street. So people approaching the station would see it. And it also faces the road leading to the trailhead. So I thought that'd be nice to actually include the pathways in this piece as well. Uh, next image. Um, so like the piece on the Fairmont Avenue side, the image of the creek will also be made up of this series of rectangles where the negative space of the building forms the shape of the ladder. So the rungs of the ladder will actually be the concrete siding of the building. And I really wanted the artwork to be in harmony with the architecture as well. Both of these pieces actually, you know, use the building to create the ladder shape. Um, so in this way, like symbolically, the artwork is embedded in the building. My work has kind of this handmade quality to it. I have a really specific line work that I do, and I wanted these pieces um, to have this kind of vertical and horizontal orientation to really um, synchronize with the lines of the building too. Um, so the dimensions for this artwork would be a little under four feet tall and about 18 feet long total. Uh, next image. So this would be the entryway piece. This would be located um, underneath the driveway that we just saw um, by the front door of the, of the building. So the parking lot is facing this piece and the front door is to the right perp perpendicular. Um, and this third piece would be a continuous image. Um, this is also an original painting that I made of homes along Choyas Creek. And it would also include the creek and the hiking trail. So a mixture of the other two pieces, a combination. Um, there's no ladder sort of shape on this piece. I really wanted it to be a continuous piece. It's gonna be viewed more closely, I think. And so that might get lost, I think, in, in, uh, in that way that people would view it. Uh, next image. Here you can see the piece a little more closely. And in terms of materials, um, I'd like to have this fabricated in porcelain enamel on a steel substrate. Um, I've been talking with a fabricator in Olympia, Washington called Windsor Fireform. Um, they do public art all over the world. They also do uh, this material uh, in signage and train stations and national parks. It's incredibly durable. They were telling me uh, actually one of the national parks had a terrible forest fire and the signage was untouched, which is amazing. Um, also, the pieces, they'll be bolted to the building, but they'll stick out about an inch and a half or so. If you imagine a shoebox lid, it's that type of kind of sculptural shape to it. So it will have that element to it as well, which I think is really um, it's kind of sets it apart as artwork and not signage. And also the building, I was told by the architects, has these sort of steel elements on it as well. So that would kind of match with the materials. Um, the dimensions for this artwork the, is about a little bit under three feet tall and about 18 feet long. And so once again, the goal for this um, proposal really is to create artwork that's welcoming. Um, it's kind of a welcome match to the community and really celebrate that community pride by depicting the areas around the station um, and just celebrating um, the neighborhood. So I'm interested in hearing uh, any feedback. Thank you, Susan. Okay. All right. Next, I would like to get to the staff reports. And I would like to call on Chris. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jason. There is a um, uh, uh, there's a, a little there's a section you missed in the script <laughs> uh, okay. below Lara introducing the um, uh, item. <laughs> okay, and I'm on agenda item five still. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your presentation, Susan. Now is our opportunity to provide Susan with feedback and ask any questions you may have about the preliminary artwork idea. If you would like to comment, please type speak in the chat window and I will call on you in order. Um, I can't believe I missed that. That's probably the most important thing about this item. So um, please type speak in the chat box, if anyone wants to comment. We got, 
Um, I think Jan Commissioner Putre, I think you might be first. Did you have a comment? Or yes, I, I wanted to tell Susan that um, I really like what she's done here. And um, I especially like the use of negative space to create the, the ladder. Um, I, I think that's great. And the idea of the two separate pieces coming together in this one continuous, very, very nice. I like it a lot. Oh, great, thank you. Okay, next we have Tiffany Perez. Yeah, hi. Um, Susan, I also like the idea a lot. Um, I think it's really original and I think the material is great. Um, my one sort of concern and comment for you is just since these um, pieces are going on the facades of the building, they seem very intricate. So I'm wondering if there's a way to actually see the detail. You know, it, from afar, they look like abstract pieces, but in fact, you're capturing um, you know, this, the scenic architecture and landscape. So I'm just wondering if you're taking into account um, sort of the view viewpoints um, and the ac uh, obviously they're going to be big, but um, sort of how they're going to be seen um, from up close and up far. Oh, that's, that's a great concern, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it is a little bit hard to kind of grasp the scale of something that's 25 feet tall on the screen as well. Uh, but that's definitely something um, to uh, consider. Next, Larry Herzog. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Susan. Uh, I, I really like your artwork very much. Uh, my question's a little more um, coming from my, my own background as an urban planning professor and geographer and about how you define the neighborhood. Because I think if you take a, a microscope and you focus on the very immediate area around the site, I would agree with you that it's single family homes. But if you just pull back a little bit, mm -hmm. you've got City Heights, which is a very culturally dynamic neighborhood with a lot of immigrants from different parts of the world. And just to the south, you have an uh, African-American neighborhood, Lincoln Heights, so you have a lot of things going on swirling around that location. And I was just wondering uh, how you thought about the idea of the neighborhood setting and the context for uh, the project and whether that played a role and whether you would consider maybe adding something to address some of those other cultural groups who are also gonna be influenced. Cause I'm sure if there's a fire in the neighborhood the fire trucks are gonna go to those other places. In fact, I think Dr. Bullock, when she mentioned, when she introduced the site she talked about uh she mentioned city heights so that caught my my eye that that was part of the calculus if you will the spatial calculus of the of the neighborhood or community depending on how you just define it so i'm just curious about what you thought about all of that yeah that definitely came up a lot in the community meeting actually about the boundaries of the neighborhood and <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, long terms um people that have lived in the neighborhood a long time that had a lot of strong opinions about the boundaries of the neighborhood and who exactly the station will be serving. And it really did kind of, uh, uh, it did seem, the end of the conversation, I guess, really did seem more localized than, than City Heights, but definitely it is, there is more sort of density there. And I could actually take the front piece, um, the Fairmont Avenue side and sort of uh, depict homes, a couple of homes from those neighborhoods as well. You know, there could be something like that. But yeah, there, people were pretty adamant about the uh, where the lines are all drawn around Ridgeview versus uh, City Heights. It's definitely a, uh, it was a, a big topic of conversation for sure. It definitely got addressed in the community meeting. But yeah, definitely, I, I like your comment a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess I wonder, as an artist, whether you could almost send a subtle message that we 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 don't want to be building walls around our communities. We want Absolutely. to send out reach out to each other so keep most of what you've done which is excellent beautiful by the way i love your artwork oh, thank you. but also kind of reach out to that idea somehow slip it in there in a very okay. subtle way yeah I think that would be a great message and i think it would actually enhance your art um which is already amazing so yeah 
No, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, definitely part of, you know, the goal of public art really is to um, strengthen community. So that's a great point. Okay, great. And I, I echo Larry Herzog's sentiments. I think more inclusion is always a good thing, particularly if it's relevant to the geography and the community surrounded and served by that fire station. Um, Anthony Graham. Hi. Um, I was just curious a bit about the materiality of the piece. Um, and I'm sorry if you spoke about it and I missed it. Um, but I mean, even in looking at this image that we see here, like we can really see like what looks like kind of thick layers of paint. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, I'm just curious, like how you think that will translate in the final project um, and what that will, how that will sort of texturally meet the building and then yeah, and like how, how that impacts the work. And I think it, it almost in some ways relates to Tiffany's earlier question about the level of detail that's sort of visible up close and at, at a distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the enamel and steel, it's not going to have like a painterly texture to it really, but they, they're really gonna kind of pull these shapes out. So it almost be sort of like, I don't wanna say we're blobs, but it is gonna have that kind of organic quality to it. They're really able to kind of mirror that. It will have a little bit of a shine to it as well, um, like enamel sort of has. Um, that's a little bit, um, the paintings are a little bit opaque, so it's hard to kind of um, get that sense to it maybe. Um, uh, but um, they can do a texture as well, actually, and we did talk about that, um, but we're still kind of in the beginning phases of talking about um, how it's going to be depicted. Um, but it will be slightly different than paintings, but there was not gonna be any blending or anything like that. And porcelain enamel does best when it has this kind of color blocking element to it. Um, so that's why I chose that rather than like say tile or something like that, where you can actually have it bl more blending and glazing and stuff like that. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, I would like to thank everyone for their input. And I want to thank you again, Susan, for your presentation. Dr. Bullock, can you provide an overview of the next steps for this project? Sure, thanks, Commissioner Wolfer. So I can go actually back to slides. So um, once again, um, we're at this um, kind of neon green step. The artist cre creates a preliminary idea. So um, with all of the feedback that you provided Susan today, she will take that into consideration in the development of her schematic artwork proposal. And um, there will be another chance for public input at that stage. And then you guys will get another chance to um, look at her schematic proposal. And then after she takes all the input, you know, she gets from the community in the development of her proposal, she'll then create a final proposal. And then um, the city will approve that final design proposal. And then she'll start, she'll get to work on actually creating the work of art. And there are several stages in that process, um, fabrication stage or construction documents, then fabrication, and then eventually installation. And then as far as um, your role, um, you will provide feedback on the schematic artwork proposal, and then make a recommendation once she arrives at the final proposal stage. And then there will be a grand opening and you will be invited. So thank you. Dr. Bulk, I have a question. Is there um, a time estimate for mm -hmm. the major milestones and next steps between now and the actual completion of the installation? That is a good question. I, from memory, I think Tentatively, it's sometime in 2024 when the fire station will be complete, but um, I'm a little hesitant to say that that's set in stone because 
due to COVID and, you know, different kind of time schedules, sometimes things fall behind, but sometimes they move faster, but right now, 2024 is what we're thinking. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So thank you, Dr. Bullock. We're going to move on to agenda item six, I believe. Is that okay, Chuck? Am I on schedule now? Yes. You're, okay. you're back on track. <laughs> Perfect. So I started highlighting everything on my script in yellow so I know what's done. So no more mistakes here. Um, so do we have any public comment to read regarding the reports? Uh, there is no. Oops, I'm sorry. I might have cut myself off. There is no public comment for this agenda item. Okay, thank you, Chuck. I'd like to call on Christine Jones to provide the staff reports. Thank you, Commissioner Wooper. Um, so we just have a couple quick short uh, reports for you today. So um, first up, um, as um, Commissioner Wooper indicated, um, uh, let's see, we, um, let's see, I guess, do we have a slide for SD practice? Great, so um, as Commissioner Wooper had indicated, um, the commissioners had recommended the purchase uh, to the city that purchased of 105 artworks um, as submitted by the SD Practice Artwork Selection Panel. So with that recommendation, uh, staff is now in the process of verifying uh, availability and verifying the condition of the artworks that were recommended. So we're going through that process right now. Um, and the next steps after verifying that will be um, contracting uh, for the actual purchase of the artworks, which we hope to um, facilitate um, by the end of the year. So stay tuned. We'll have more updates on SD practice in December. So um, also going back to the park social slide for a second, um, as far as um, park social goes, as you know, we've been going through the, the panel process um, to, um, for the commissioning of artists associated with Park Social. Um, as you might remember, we're, in the, we're going to be potentially awarding contracts to over 18 artists. So that panel process has been complete uh, and the city is now in the process of, of negotiating contracts with the recommended artists. So we'll be able to report out, out more on that at the next meeting in December as well. So um, lots of work happening. Um, uh, I would also just wanna point out um, a thank you to Linda Sotelo specifically, um, as she was the public art committee member who served on the park social panel. So um, again, lots of contracting, lots of um, things happening at the staff level with both of these initiatives. Um, and we'll be um, able to report out more information and announce artists um, in the coming months on that. So stay tuned. Um, and I think that really um, ends our, our reports for today. Okay. Thank you for the report. Are there any committee member reports? If so, please type speak in the chat box and I will call on you in order. Linda Caballero Sotelo, did you want to speak? I just added a comment that um, congratulating staff for the Park Social, the whole coordination of that effort. It was truly monumental. And it were so many artists, which is incredibly gratifying to be a part of that. It was grueling, I'll say that in terms of time. So if as committee members, we found it, you know, long and, and um, intense in many respects because they're, everybody's worthy certainly that applied for this but the staff just went above and beyond during really difficult times trying to court this um, you know over over technology and just vetting everyone so I just wanted them to to be recognized and acknowledged for the tremendous work they did on this thank you Linda and again thank you for your participation it sounds like everyone did incredible work Thank you, staff, as well. Um, 
Okay, I think that completes everything for today. So thank you committee members. A reminder, our next public art committee meeting will convene on Friday, December 4th. This meeting is adjourned. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Everyone. Thank you all. Take care. See you soon. Thanks. Good job, Jason. Thank you.